Welcome to Choice Classic Radio, where we bring to you the greatest old-time radio shows. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and thank you for donating at choiceclassicradio.com. Hitchhiker. And is she pretty? Come on in, young lady. I'm bound for Little Ben, but I'll drop you any way you like. Thank you. You're very kind. My name is Blackie. Boston Blackie. I'm Florence Newton. Want to give me an idea of where you'd like to be dropped off? I want to go to the farm. Any one in particular? My own farm. The one my father owns. Uh-huh. I've been wading in the creek, and I hope he won't mind. Well, there isn't much to do out here in the country except go waiting, is there? No, there isn't. What do you kids do for excitement? Saturday night dances, movies, that sort of thing? Yes, that sort of thing. You're uh, not particularly talkative, are you? I guess I'm not. Good guessing. This is the farm right here. Would you please stop? Why, Sure. Thank you very much. No trouble at all. You may have a little trouble with that door on your side. It sticks. Oh, wait right where you are, and I'll go around and open it for you. Thank you. Be there in a jiffy. Well, here we are. You let... No. Where did she go? Florence. Florence Newton. Hmm. That's funny. Maybe she went into the house. Guess I'd I'd better find out. Yes? I imagine you must be Mr. Newton, is that right? Yes. I just drove your daughter to the door, and when I went to help her out of the car, she disappeared. I thought maybe she came in the house here. My daughter? What did she look like? Young. About 21, I'd say. Attractive. Brown hair, blue eyes. About so high. She'd been waiting in the creek, and I gave her a lift. Well, what's the matter? Isn't she here? No, she isn't. You described my daughter all right, but she was drowned in that creek you were talking about three years ago. And now back to Dick Calmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. Well, Thompson, I guess you'll close your case against Butch Heathers tomorrow morning, don't you? You're going to close it, Inspector Faraday, and get a conviction of murder, too. I've never been as sure of a case since I've been district attorney. No reason for you to doubt you'll get a conviction in this case. Boston Blackie's going to send Heathers to the chair for you. (laughs) I've never known you to be so sure of Blackie before, Inspector. I thought you two didn't even get along. We rib each other a lot, but we don't mean it. At least I don't. Uh I know I can depend on Blackie when I really need him. Well, I need him this time, Inspector. Blackie says he saw Heathers kill that man. If he repeats that statement in court, that's all I want. Sure it is. It's all you need. Blackie's word is reliable. When he says he sees something, he really sees it. Howdy, Blackie. Welcome to Little Ben. Uh, this is uh, Harry Oakfield. Pleasure, Blackie. How are you, Oakfield? Well, Sheriff, do you have those records on Butch Heathers ready for me? Sure do. So Butch went to the big city and got himself into real trouble, did he? He sure did. I want his local record to turn over to the DA. I knew that boy was no good when I arrested him for stealing Clyde Ranson's shotgun five years ago. 
Well, here's all the dope on him as a local bad boy, Blackie. I made copies so you can have these. Thanks, Sheriff. Those records going to send Heathers to the chair, Blackie? These records plus what I saw, old Phil. And speaking of seeing things, Sheriff, I saw Florence Newton this morning. Flo Newton? Well, she's been dead three years. So her father told me. <laughs> Blackie, now don't you try to pull that old one on me. I've been hearing for years about people picking up ghosts in every town in this country. But I did pick up this girl, Sheriff. Uh, she said she was Florence Newton, and her father admitted the girl was his daughter when I described it to him. <laughs> Blackie, I'm afraid the country air has gone in your head. Better stay in the city where you don't see things. <laughs> look, now look, I don't believe in ghosts any more than you do. But that girl got in my car down by the creek, rode up to the Newton farm with me, and then just disappeared. Well, Blackie, she acted like a ghost anyhow. <laughs> Believe me, Blackie, Flo Newton's been dead for over three years. <laughs> All right, Sheriff, I believe you, but believe me, I picked up a girl in my car this morning, and she was Florence Newton. Well, it's possible, Blackie, but where did you get wings for your car? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Larry, you want to... When I see things, I see things, and I see I'm not getting anywhere with you. Thanks for the records on Butch Heathers, and so long. <laughs> Goodbye, Blackie, and and, and say hello to Miss Newton on the way home. Huh? <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Oh. Well, now, uh, how do you like that, Mr. Oldfield? Yeah. Boston Blackie suddenly seen ghosts. Well, that's <laughs> some story, sir, if you think I could make anybody believe it. <laughs> well, you're a writing man, Mr. Oldfield. Your paper sent you up here to get a story on Butch Heathers, but I think you got a better one on Blackie and the ghost of Florence Newton. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Mary. Come on in. Hmm, I certainly will. Blackie, have you seen the morning paper? No, I haven't. I was out of the city yesterday, and I didn't get back to town until early this morning. Hmm, I'll say you were out of the city, and out of your mind, too. Look at this newspaper. The whole town's laughing at you. What for? What about... Uh-oh. Blackie, since when do you not only see a ghost, but tell the newspapers about it? I didn't tell the papers about it, Mary. We... Hey, wait a minute. That fellow Oldfield in the sheriff's office must have been a reporter. Oh, fine. Well, you phone that paper right away and get a retraction. Wait till Inspector Faraday reads this. He'll haunt you with it for years. I can't help that, Mary. I did see that girl. I talked to her. I had her in my car. I took her home. You I... fell asleep. You had a dream and talked out of turn to a reporter. Now, Mary, stop that. If the girl was a ghost, she was a ghost. But she was in my car, and now let's skip it. I have Butch Heathers to worry about today. I'm going to help make a ghost out of him. Oh, so you can keep seeing him for the rest of your life, too? Look, let's forget about the ghost of Florence Newton and worry about the trial of Butch Heathers. I thought no one was worried about it except Heathers. Well, you saw him kill that man, didn't you? Mm-hmm. And I have some reports on him from little Ben that should help cinch the case against him. You going to be in court? I wouldn't miss being here. You're the star witness for the state. Yes, and when I get in the witness chair, it's going to be another kind of a chair for Butch Heathers. <laughs> Boston Blackie, take the stand. Raise your right hand. <laughs> you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so you got. I do. Take the witness chair. Thank you. Proceed, Mr. District Attorney. Thank you, Your Honor. What's your name? Boston Blackie. Do you know Butch Heathers? Yes, I do. Could you point him out in this courtroom? Of course, there he is. In that end seat at the first table there, the man wearing the green shirt. Will you tell this courtroom where you saw Butch Heathers and what he was doing on the night of June 6th last? Well, <clears throat> well, I was walking through the alley behind the garage where I keep my car, and I saw Heathers approach a man known as Ellie Spry, pull out a gun, and pump three bullets into him. Yes. Then he ran. I chased him, but he got away. You say you definitely saw Butch Heathers kill Ellie Spry. That's right. It was definitely Butch Heathers. Thank you, Blackie. Your witness, Mr. Walters. Thank you, Mr. District Attorney. Blackie, you say you saw Butch Heathers kill Ellie Spry. Yes, I did. 
You saw the murder committed with your own eyes? With my own eyes. Those same eyes that yesterday morning saw the ghost of a girl who'd been dead and buried for over three years? Whoa. Harder. Harder in the court. You did see a ghost on the road to Little Bend yesterday morning. Didn't you? I... I saw a girl. You claim you saw Florence Newton, Black. The description was perfect. But Florence Newton is dead. Isn't she? Yes, so I understand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you have just heard this man frankly and openly admit that he saw a ghost. Now, we all know there are no such things as ghosts, except in fairy stories. And in the minds of people with overdeveloped imagination. <laughs> Order! Order in the court! There will be no outburst. Blackie, Inspector Faraday of the Homicide Department is one of your best friends, isn't he? Yes, he is. And you'd like to see him send Butch Heathers to the chair, wouldn't you? I'd like to see the guilty punished. And you'd like to see your friends come up in the world, too, don't you? And the conviction of Butch Heathers might get a promotion for Faraday, mightn't it? He's a good police officer. He's deserved a promotion for a long time. And you'd like to help him get it, wouldn't you? I've always helped Faraday whenever I could. Thank you, Blackie. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, by this witness' own testimony, the facts are clear. There's no proof here that Butch Heathers killed Ellie Spry. This man sees ghosts. So he can see things that don't exist. This man who claims he saw my client commit the murder claims so in an effort to aid and improve the status of the police department friend of his. How can you convict a man on the testimony of a witness such as this? How can you send a man to a... Will the defendant please rise? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Butch Heathers, not guilty. <laughs> Court is adjourned. Hey, Blackie. Blackie. Oh, hello, Fernie. Well, it looks as if he got away from us. Yeah, he got away, all right. A great guy you are. I counted on you to help him send this guy where he belongs. But you have to go out and see a ghost. You don't believe me either, do you? I'll say I don't. Do you realize what that ghost has done? Sure, he got into this trial and got Butch Heathers out of a jam. And we can't touch him now. He can't be tried again for the same crime. I know all about that. And I know something about that ghost, too. When you stop talking about that ghost... I'm going to find that ghost and let it do the talking parody. I'm going to find it if I have to follow it to the happy haunting grounds. <laughs> And now, back to Boston Blackie. On his way to the country village of Little Bend to get the criminal records of Butch Heathers on trial for murder, Boston Blackie gives a lift to a girl who says she is Florence Newton. Later, it turns out Florence Newton has been dead for over three years. Blackie is star witness in the trial against Butch Heathers because he saw Butch commit the crime. But the defense attorney wins an acquittal for Butch on the grounds that a man who sees a ghost can see a lot of things that don't exist. As we return to our story, it is the day following the trial, and Mary Wesley is with Blackie in his apartment. Blackie, I'm sorry I teased you about Florence Newton. Can't you do something to find her again? Yeah, I've tried that, Mary. I drove out to Little Bend again last night and asked everywhere for a girl who might look just like the dead Florence Newton. But no luck. Well, that's because there was no ghost. Now, will you stop trying to convince yourself there was? Mary, did it ever occur to you that I never said the girl was a ghost? The girl was real, flesh and blood, real. It was a father and the sheriff and everyone else who said if I saw Florence Newton, I saw a ghost. Well, you described the girl to Mr. Newton and he said it was his daughter. He said it answered the description of his daughter, but that it must have been the ghost of his daughter, if it was anything. Ah, uh, we'll just find her again. Well, I'll help you, but I certainly never thought I'd help you look for another girl. I'll get Faraday in with us. Maybe we can... Oh, speak of the inspector and ring the doorbell. Chances are that he'd rather wring my neck. Come in. 
Fortune, Blackie. Florence I... Newton. What? Florence, am I glad to see you. Thanks, Blackie, but... Blackie, if this girl's a ghost... I'm not I'm... a ghost, Miss... Oh, excuse Miss... me, uh, Miss Newton, Miss Wesley. Uh, hello. So you are real, aren't you? Oh, real pretty, too. And Miss Wesley, I came here to explain all about what happened. It's about time somebody explained something. To begin with, my name isn't Florence Newton. I'm Vivian Peters, and I was paid $1,000 to play that trick on you. Who paid you? Butch Heathers? Yes. He was out on bail, but I didn't know that. Or him. He said it was just a gag. Mm -hmm. When I read in the papers this morning that he was acquitted because you said you saw a ghost. Well, I realized why I'd been asked to pose as Florence Newton. That's the best thing you've realized all day, Miss Peters. But you're going to be one of his worst enemies for telling me this, you know. Why? What have I done? You've proved my testimony against Butch was correct. Well, so what, Blackie? Heathers was tried and acquitted for killing Nellie Spry, and he can't be tried again for the same crime. No, he can't, Mary, but maybe there's some other way to get at him. I'm going down to see Faraday. Miss Peters, did anyone see you come to my apartment? No, Blackie. Good. You and Mary stay here till I get back. Everything's going to be all right, unless I'm all wrong. <laughs> Hello, Wallace. Hello, oh, Butch. Come in. Thanks. Well, how's it feel to be a free man? Great, Wallace. Great. You did a good job for me. You're the best lawyer in town. You didn't kill Ellie Spry. That's why I got you off, Butch. Yeah. But Blackie had me nailed for that killing until you pried me loose with that business about the ghost. I knew that ghost story would make Blackie sound silly. <laughs> what do you mean you knew it, Butch? I didn't know it myself until I saw the papers just before the trial. <laughs> I got news for you, Wallace. I give you a little assist in beating a rap the state had on me. I fixed up that ghost. What are you talking about? Cost me a thousand clams, Wallace. Don't worry. We'll come out of your feet. Wait a minute, Butch. Did Blackie think he was Florence Newton or didn't he? Sure he did. It was the girl I hired to say she was Flo Newton and go through the whole routine. Just as Blackie said. Butch, I hope you're lying. Nah, I'm not lying and bragging. That was a pretty smart trick, wasn't it? You see... I knew about Flo dying in that creek a while back as I was living a little bit when it happened. Get out of here, Butch. Huh? You heard me? Get out! I took your case and defended you because I thought you were innocent. Now I know you're not. You did kill Ellie Spry, didn't you? Is that what the jury said? No. Because you did something behind my back to ruin Boston Blackie's testimony. Sure made a mess of it, didn't I? <laughs> Laugh if you want to, Butch. <laughs> Laugh because you know you can't be tried again for killing Ellie Spry. Laugh because you made a fool out of me. But you're a killer, Butch. Yeah, smart one, though, huh? <laughs> yes, you're smart, all right, but so am I. <laughs> Legally, you're free, but I'm a lawyer, and I'm going to find some loophole in the law to bring you to justice. Maybe that girl can help me. Maybe she can go to the police and tell them. Think so, Wally? She's a ghost, remember? And all the ghosts can say is, Boo! <laughs> Go ahead, Butch. Have a good laugh. Go out and have a good time, too. Because you won't be having a good laugh or a good time for very long. Hey, hey. Who are you calling, Wallace? The police. I won't be a party to a conspiracy. I think you better not, Wallace. You don't frighten me with that gun, Butch. But you bother me with that phone. Put it down. Or I'll knock it down here. I think I'd better take that gun. You think so? No, so. <laughs> uh. Ah, uh, now I gotta go get another lawyer. Blackie, get out of my office before you start seeing things in here. Look, Faraday, will you start seeing things? Will you start seeing how and why I was made to believe I picked up Florence Newton on the road to Little Bend? I know why you think you picked up Florence Newton on the road to Little Bend. You're a big dope. You mean I'm a big dupe? Dope? Dupe? What's the difference? No. Faraday. That girl's real name is Vivian Peters, and she was hired by Butch Heathers to pose as Florence Newton. How do you know? Because she's in my apartment. She told me all about it. Butch hired her when he was out on bail. Now you're not only seeing crazy things, you're saying crazy things. How would Butch know about the death of Florence Newton so he could rig up such a stunt? Butch lived in Little Bend. He knew what she looked like, and the records show that he was there when the Newton girl drowned in that creek. So he was there. So he knew the girl was drowned. So what am I supposed to do now? I can't send Butch Heathers where I want to send him. He can't be tried again for killing Ellie Spry. I know he can't, but I've got to... Listen. There's your phone, Faraday. I know it, Blackie. i got to know something. Faraday speaking. Inspector Faraday, this is 
Madeline Wells, Harold Walters' secretary. Yes, Miss Wells. Inspector, Miss Walters has been killed. What? He's in his office, dead. He's been shot. Wait a minute. Blackie, Butch Heather's lawyer has been killed. I know. I had to say it. Stay where you are, Miss Wells. Yes. Don't touch anything. We'll be right up. All right, Inspector. Well, Blackie, what do you think of that? It's not what I think, Faraday. It's what I know. Butch Heathers has made another mistake. Only this time, we're going to make it his last. Oh, no, Blackie. You bungled things the last time I had Butch. Go have yourself some fun in a graveyard. You need some new ghosts, maybe. You're out of this murder. I'm out? Oh, no. You're out? Oh, yes. From here on, I'm handling Butch Heathers all by myself. You mean mishandling Butch, don't you? I'm going to surprise you, Blackie. I've got an idea. In fact, I've got two ideas. You'd better get an idea how you can pin the murder of Harold Walters on Butch before you do anything else. We're just guessing he's our man. He's not our man. He's my man. And I know how I could pin this on him, providing I get no interference from you. I'm going to have you kept here in this office for an hour, so I can have my way, and you can't get in it. It's a funny thing how many uses you can get out of a fire escape like this. Mm. You can get out of a building on it, hang laundry on it, sunbathe, and sleep on it. Yeah, and keep quiet on it, too, Muldoon. All right. The glass in this window to Butch's room isn't soundproof. Yeah, but it's sure almost look-proof, Inspector. Why, it's so dirty I can hardly see through it. I can see enough. I can see Butch in there and the door to the hall. Are you sure that... Uh, Peter's girl will do what you told her to do. She'd better. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm sort of proud of myself about this. Yeah. This is the kind of idea Blackie would get. He's not the only one who's smart. Well, uh, what if it doesn't work? What do you expect from Blackie's ideas? Uh-oh, there must have been a knock on the door in there. Butch just got up and walked over to it. Well, now he can lift up the window a little, huh? Yeah. Quick, while he's on the other side of the room. All right. Uh, that's enough. Butch just opened the door. Is it the Peter stain? It sure well, is. Well, Miss Piz, you took long enough getting here. Come in. Thanks. We can hear pretty good. She phoned and said she wanted to talk to me, sweetheart. Well, what about? You ought to know what about. I didn't know I was going to save you from the chair when I said I'd play ghost for Boston Blackie. Well, yeah, what you didn't know didn't hurt you too much, did it? <laughs> You got a breath of country air out of it, too, didn't you? <laughs> you got out of a murder rat, Mr. Heathers. And everyone knows you killed Ellie Fry. Blackie's testimony was right, every word of it. Yeah? You made an accomplice out of me, Heathers, and I don't like it. Oh, you don't? Well, well. That's <laughs> yeah, too bad. It's so bad that I'm going to the police. Oh, I wouldn't do that if I was you. But you are not me. Look, look, I killed Ellie Fry and got away with it. I killed Harold Wallace, my lawyer. I'm going to get away with that, too. I'd include you in that list in a minute. And don't forget it. Gee, the police will know you killed Walter. Yeah, they won't even suspect me. Then Wallace just went a case for me. <laughs> Anybody in this town ought to know that Wallace and I are the best of friends. But don't go to the cops, sweetheart. Won't do you any good, and I wouldn't like it. You understand? Come on, Muldoon, let's yes, go. I I've heard all yes. I need to hear. I All right, I'll raise the window hey. now. Who's out there? No time now. Let's go right through the glass. Right. <laughs> don't move, Butch. Cops! Duck, Miss Peters, I may be shooting. Yeah, she ain't ducking, but I am behind her. Go ahead, shoot, copper. Hit this dame. See if I can. Oh, no, don't. Inspector, don't shoot. You'll hit the girl. You don't mean to kill a girl, don't you? She makes a nice target, doesn't she, Inspector? A nice target, but a better shield. Don't Your shoot. pals ought to see you now, Butch. You're as tough as you claim to be. You wouldn't be holding that girl in front of you. Ah, uh, cut the talk, pal. Go ahead and shoot, why don't you? You know I'm not going to shoot. Uh, polite cop, huh? You don't shoot ladies, huh? Well, you don't shoot me neither. And you don't catch me. There's a couple of more steps back. And I can reach the door. You did this all wrong, Inspector. Shut up. Well, I'm at the door, Faraday. Go ahead and shoot if you want. This is your last chance. <laughs> so long. So long, copper. Here's your girlfriend. Maybe you... Stop. Go to sleep, boy. Get tired. Blackie. Yes, Inspector. Blackie with a black jack. Are you all right, Miss Peters? She does, thank you. I think my arm's going to be bruised a lot. I think Butch's head is bruised a bit, too. Or maybe this blackjack got the worst of the deal. Faraday, it's a good thing you told the guard to let me go in an hour. Yeah. I knew where you were heading and stayed out there in the hall to wait for you. I imagine you heard Heather's confession. Sure. You heard him admit he killed Ellie Spry and his lawyer. 
Yes, and it's a good thing I was outside the door. Faraday, what would you do without me? I don't know, but I'd sure like to try. <laughs> don't do it, pal. You're a big man on account of me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The morning papers are going to say that Butch Heathers is another of the feathers in your cap. 